Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Happy Sunday. Hopefully you guys are having a great day so far. Uh, and we need to talk about some trading methods on this game of FIFA Ultimate Team that are very current and very applicable to the market right now. Because we're still in a market that has a decent amount of coins. I know you guys want to trade and make coins like me at all times in this market. And this method, this methodology um, is nothing really new but it's applying it to new cards and it's becoming very successful. So that's what I wanna talk about today. We're gonna to be trading with Future Stars cards, um, some trading methods with those types of cards. And then also, I wanna look at some panic selling and some of the market movements that happened today because of the SBCs. And I think that we will start there uh, and talk about this SBC and then move into talking about trading with the Future Stars. But this card right here and actually some of the headliners today had some market movements and some panic um, because of real life game performances like Dortmund cards. We'll talk about those in a second. And then this SBC, Upa Meccano, 86 rated center back card was dropped into the game today. Really good looking SBC on the outside, costs around 220,000 coins, I believe. Really good looking card when you look at the face stats of the card. But when you go into the inside, right, you look at the uh, In-game stats, 67 stamina is less than ideal. 70 agility at this point in the game is below average. Honestly, it's not terrible, but it could be better, you know, seeming some of the center backs we have out now. But the real issue here is like the dribbling, the reactions, the defensive awareness, uh, and the stamina on this card. I mean, this card is just kind of, the face stats look great, but the in-game stats don't really back it up in all the areas that I think it, that it should. Now, a lot of people don't see that though, and they think, Boom, this card looks great. French center back, you know, 89 defense, 85 or 89 physical, 85 defense. He's got 97 strength. I still think the stamina, which isn't a huge issue for like cards in this game and for the way people play this game and they park the bus and sit in the back. Um, I, I just don't think this card is worth the coin amount, right? If this card was 100K, 120K, I'd say sure, maybe it's all right. But 220,000 coins, for that card with the flaws that it has, especially with the reactions um, and the the lack of the stamina on Upmakano, does not make me like that card. But I can tell that a lot of other people on this game do like this card because there were some panic selling market movements today. Some cards on this game took a hidden price. Example number one is Rafael Varane, 145,000 coins. He was basically 165 today before the uh, SBC came out. I'll show you guys the graph right now over on Footbin. We'll take a look at this gold card graph and speak about this for a second. Rafael Varane, 149,000 coins. As you can see, we'll look at the hourly. The SBC came out today. He was 160, 165, and then boom, he's down to like 145, 150 right away. It's currently around 140 on the market. There were some other cards that got hit because of this, and you're gonna, this is gonna be crazy, but Eder Militao, Road to the Final card, actually was down today as well. Still is kind of down. He was 730, 740, getting into the middle of the content day today. Dropped down under 700K. So not a ton, but he dropped a little bit. And again, the reason why we're really looking at this in a card like uh, Militao is because we have Champions League games that are coming very, very soon. I'm going to maybe talk about these cards a little bit in this video today as we get into some of the trading things. But there were some market movements, some center back panic today because of that SBC, uh, especially on the French center backs. Varane was down. Varane's informs were down. He was the A1 example of a card that got hit today in price because of... Uh, that SBC dropping. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this Delaney card and this Royce card right here. Marco Royce, and we'll start by looking at him on Footbin um, and on the market as well. Marco Royce, right? This card has demand because he links to the brand new Holland. Holland is the craze right now of the Bundesliga, and Holland is the craze in foot with the new Future Stars card, with his inform, with his potential for more special cards, a player of the month. Look at what happened to this Royce card today and why it has rebounded already. Basically what happened today, this is a headliner card, right? Marco Royce was 1.5, 1.53, 1.6, actually a 1.7, 1.7 million coins this card was today. They played a game versus Bayer Leverkusen. This game would have taken them to four wins in a row in the Bundesliga and this card would have gotten upgraded. They lost the game. They lost four to three. That means he is not getting that, you know, 
uh, four consecutive win upgrade plus one upgrade to this card. He dropped all the way down to 1.322. I actually have one on my transfer list. I didn't have enough coins to buy it, but he was 1.3 million coins on the PlayStation. What did he drop to on Xbox? On Xbox, he was 1.21, and he's now back up over 100K on both consoles just because of the rarity of this card and because it's a center attacking man of the Bundesliga, probably the best one that is in the game. Same thing happened with Delaney. This one is a lot more affordable by a lot of people. If you had Thomas Delaney and you were hoping for that uh, Bundesliga win today, you're a bit disappointed right now because Thomas Delaney was 210K, 215 on Xbox. He was 250, 260 on PlayStation. He has dropped down to 165 on the Xbox and he was actually at 185 here on the PlayStation. He's actually still around the 185 mark. So um, we looked at these a little bit today while I was on the live stream. And I was a bit leery of these cards uh, investing in them. Now, I understand why you would want to because it's a live item, right? And whenever you have panic selling on a live item, that's really a notion where you can usually feel pretty confident about going and picking that up because uh, it's a live item and they get upgraded by performances. The reason why I was a little bit sketched out with this and not fully on it 100% with the Delaney, uh, I was never really looking at the Royce. Um, the Royce was honestly, it was a fantastic deal because that's a card that a lot of people would want to link to uh, Howland. But this card right here, I was a bit skeptical with because um, he does, he's not going to get a lot of informs on his own, right? A CDM, there aren't a lot of CDMs in this game that get a lot of informs on their own. So I didn't feel like this guy was going to have a, a really quick rebound. Now, is it possible for Dortmund to go on a tear now and, and continue playing well after this one hic uh, hiccup? And, and get four in a row. Yes, it is, but that's not going to happen for the another, next three weeks or so when they have more time to play games. So they have to win their next four in order to do that. So that's why that card is down, uh, and I would just let it chill there for a bit, I think. If you want to buy it for your team, it's not a bad time to do that. Um, and then we also had the opposite happen today. Alex Tellez's is headliner. Absolutely boomed today on the market because... Porto went out and defeated Benfica. Benfica was number one in the Portuguese league, Leonos, uh, and Porto took them down today. Porto now has three wins in a row, and this was the biggest uh, game that was in front of them, the biggest challenge presented to them to uh, prohibit them from getting those four wins in a row. So myself with the untradeable Tellez, I'm pumped that they won today. They, they somehow pulled it off. They got the dub. And now this card is looking very possible for it to get another plus one upgrade for the four consecutive wins. Um, if they can win their next game, which I think is in like a week or so, I'll have to look at the schedule again. But the next time Porto play in the league, uh, hopefully this card will get upgraded. So that's why he went up a bunch today. He went from 260K to 320K today, uh, surely upon that hype. Again, these headliner cards fluctuate a ton, especially if there's a matchup. Like, he started going up right when Porto was scoring those goals. So this is something to just keep in mind and watch for. Watch these headliner cards, man. If they have two wins in a row, they might be up in price a little bit already. Maybe they're playing a pretty sizable opponent you don't think they're going to win. They end up doing well in the game. They get a lead in the game. These cards almost act like Road to the Finals. I've mentioned that many times uh, since they move live in game because of team performance. So that is something to watch with those cards as well. Trading with them inter game. So I wanted to talk about that today. Panic selling on the French center backs and some other center backs around the market. And then panic selling with the headliner cards and the increase in price in some headliner cards as well. But let's talk about trading, live trading on this market because these future stars are fluctuating a bunch. And I'm going to take a look at a couple today. Two examples that we're going to use today to cover this method I'm talking about. We've talked about chem styles all year on FIFA, right? Because chem styles are so expensive this year. Hunters and shadows sometimes sell for the likes of around 10 to 15,000 coins, depending on lightning rounds and depending on stuff like that. And it's also increasing. This is why we do chem style trading, right? Because those chem styles are, you know, they're expensive. So the cards with chem styles attached to them are automatically more expensive on the market because instead of people going and buying those chem styles, they just take the easy route and go buy the card with the chem style already on it. So, Moussa Dembele, striker, French. There's a center attack in mid from uh, the league gun that is a perfect link to this card. Not a perfect link, a strong link. Uh, and this is just, you know, a French striker, 100,000 coins. A lot of people are probably going to try this card and want to use this card. But what if they want to use him with a hunter? Right now, Moussa Dembele, without a hunter, is selling for 105k, 
100, 405,000 coins. He's up like 10K from what he was out of packs on Friday. So that tells me people want to use this card. People also want to use this card with a Hunter Chem style on it. But now is a perfect time to be doing this trading method. Uh, and basically what we're going to be doing is chemistry style trading with these cards. So you're going to be like searching for snipes, for undercuts, and on bid, uh, these Musa Dembele's with a Hunter, basically. So the way I'm doing this filter is I'm filtering out all the Musa Dembele uh, Champions League uh the the rare card that shows up as a rare this dembele right here with a hundred thousand coin open bid on it i'm going to add that to my transfer targets wait to see if i can get that uh under like 110 100 and like eight or 107k is kind of like my buy range for this musa dembele because right now on the market it looks like he's selling for 117 to 118 and these cards do sell trust me i did this on friday of course a lot more people are buying cards on friday but there's still people that are trying to try these cards out, use them, try them out, have fun with them, put them in their squads. So look for undercuts on these cards. People are finishing their weekend league, and that's why I mentioned this is a great time to do this. You can sit here and snipe Musa Dembele's in your profit range. Let's say you put it at 110, right? Because 110 is basically break even. Uh, or maybe you know you want to you want to look at ones that are under 110s. So you look at 108. You'll probably get a couple of these every few minutes because people are just done with the weekend league. And again, that's why this is a perfect time to trade like this is because people are finishing the weekend league. They're selling their cards off to get coins to do an SBC or whatever. And a lot of times they forget that they have that chemistry style attached to them. And that card is actually worth more than what your, uh, than its lowest price. Max Aaron's is another one, right? So I'm picking these cards because they're very affordable, right? Both of these cards are in the 100,000 coin range. These cards are very affordable for most people to go out and to try. And I've found that there is a uh, a discrepancy in price between how much they go for with the Hunter and the Shadow. Boom. Danny, or that's not Danny. Max Aarons right here. This is his name. Max Aarons. Boom. I just got that for 101,000 coins. I'm going to send that to my transfer list because that's almost one of the cheapest Max Aarons on the market. That's what he goes for normally, right at 100k. What does he go for with the shadow? There was none at one at 117. He's selling for 117,000 coins right now with a shadow. So I'm probably going to list mine up at like 116, 117 because it is late at night and I want to make sure I get the quick flip. I want to make sure that I get the sale. So I'm going to list mine as the cheapest on the market. You don't always have to though because maybe let's say there's a few of them listed. Danny Aarons is down to 110. You don't have to undercut those, all right? But I'm going to list right now for 115, try to get a sale. And that's a cheeky like 10K profit almost right there on that card. Uh, buying at 105, selling at 115. You know, we have like five or 6K tax right there, 6K tax. So that's a, a fantastic deal on the, the Aaron's card right there. So this type of thing, it works with all the future stars. I want to actually, I'm going to revert, I'm going to revert that statement. It doesn't always work with all of these, right? So I'm looking at future stars from set one. Let's look at Kamara as well. This is one that I have not looked at yet. Uh, Ola Kamara at 170K-ish, maybe? Uh, 170K, no. With a shadow, no. 180, no. One, okay, this is this is a bit interesting. I'm looking at the wrong Kamara, never mind. This is not interesting. Oh, that, that, is, uh, that is an L. Is it this guy? It's this guy, boom. All right, never mind, boys. Disregard that. We got to get the right Kamara. Uh, and we also have to factor out his inform. This is, uh, you can tell that I have not looked at this card yet. Kamara with a shadow is right around 170,000 coins or so. One, yeah, looks like 170. It looks like there's a bunch of them listed overnight. 173. 172, 173 for Kamara with a shadow. What does he go for without a shadow? He goes for one, goodness gracious. How did those not pop up before? He goes for 100 and what with a shadow? 160? Yo, these price ranges, man. He goes for 155 with a sh Is that profitable? Yeah, it probably was. A little bit of a clip right there. Is that fresh too? Not fresh, but 160K-ish without the chem style. So you might see somebody list this card without the chem style at 160K, uh, trying to sell that card before they're done with Weekend League. You're like, boom, I can sell this for one 172, 173 possibly. Now that's not a great deal, to be honest. You're not making a lot of profit there. So it's really key to find some of these that you can make profit on. Let's check one more, Kabak. Let's check Kabak right here. Two, he says he's 230, 240 right now. This card took a little bit of a hit today because of the, the SBC that came out. So there's uh, 222 
and there's a bids at 240. So I'm gonna, since this is the cheapest on the market at 240, I'm gonna add that to my transfer targets and see if it sells. Uh, and then what does this card go for without the shadow? Without the shadow, his card goes for two, 227K. So we have to realize that there is about, you know, 10 to like 12K tax ish here. We have a little bit over 10K tax on this card. So I'm probably want to try to get him around like the 225 range if I'm only able to sell at like just over 240 because I want to be able to make some coins on that. So that's again why I, I say try to focus on the cheaper ones like the, uh, the Dembele. Uh, maybe Diaby is another good one to look as well. These cards are probably pretty good to look at from team number one because there's no more supply of them in packs at the moment. Now, you can definitely look at the team two uh, cards as well. Some of the cheaper guys from team two are probably a good shout, but uh, team one being out of packs, I think is a move for me. Uh, let's check Diaby right now with a Hunter. How much does he go for the Hunter chem style? 85,000 coins. And without the Hunter chem style, he was under, under 80K, right? Yeah, so without the 100 chem style, he's like 75. With it, he's over 80. So that's a, a, another move right there that you can try with those. And again, this is just something you have to do by trial and error. This is something we do with a lot of other cards in this game. But with these new cards, people are trying them, right? And they want to try them with the chem styles. So they go out and they buy the cards. Let's check. Um, who can we check from this new squad to see if this works? Uh, Danielle Malin. This is a card that a lot of people want to try out. Mr. Malin, how much are you going for? 200K? I'm guessing he's around 200K. He is over 200K. 204, 205, 206. He is 206,000 coins. How much is he with a Hanta chemistry style? He is 230,000 coins. Now, this is an interesting one. If that actually sells, that's crazy because he's like 30K above his going price with the Hunter chem style. So that's a crazy one to watch out for. Again, do the cards sell at that inflated price? You just kind of have to look and see as I got a sale right now. And it is, it was at Max Aaron's at 115,000 coins. So that was a GG right there. Bought it for 100, sold it for 115. Quick little flip. You love to see it. That's why the trading with that method was really good for me on Friday when there was a lot of people buying. Uh, wow, that is very cheap. 457. Can I get myself on one of these bids really quick? Oh, another one. Oh, baby. Those are pretty cheap bids, to be honest. I'm trying to flip these again overnight. And I'll, I'll end the video by talking about this. Last night again, I feel like I did a really good call yesterday with these cards. Danielle Malin, I talked about him last night. I was honestly a little unsure with what his price was, if he was going to rebound. But we, you guys know what happened. Yesterday, Danielle Malin was at 176 on Xbox, 193 on PlayStation. He booms up to 250 almost on both consoles today. He's back down to 200K. Will he do that big of a jump tomorrow? I doubt it, but I don't think 220 is out of the question. Again, if you're flipping these cards from Saturday into Sunday... And I talked about this yesterday. The prices on Saturday night tonight into Sunday need to be lower than what they were from Friday night into Saturday because they have more pack supply and stuff like that. SAR, I bought SARS yesterday at 410K and he went up to 470, 480. He's back down to 389. If I see him at 375, I'm interested. This Hudson Adoy yesterday was 526 at his absolute lowest. He's now 450. If I see this card and if I can get him under 470, I'm going to do it because I think I can sell them tomorrow at like 530 or 540. That would be a really nice flip right there. So I'm currently bidding on a Hudson Adoy. So let's see if we can drop like a 460 bid on this and then maybe win this one as well. But again, this is some risky flipping. It's not the easiest thing to do. And it's kind of just like monitoring price trends and looking at rarity of these cards. Let me go see if I can get this Hudson Adoy really quick and show you how rare he is. Look how rare this card is. 536,000 coins. I'm trying to buy him at 470. He has one page at 536K. That's why I'm a fan of this Hudson Adoy. He is so freaking rare on this market and on this game right now. 460, boom. That is my card for 460K. I'm a huge fan of that. If I can get both of these at 460, I will be happy. Are they both fresh? They are both fresh. That's a GG. Okay. If I can get both of these at 460, I know it's literally all my coins. But we're full sending it, man, because this card is so rare. All I need is like 15 or 20 people in the entire world to want to try this card and be willing to pay 550, which is what he was for most of the day um, on Saturday. And then I'm feeling pretty good about this card. So you saw me get the first one. 
I'll leave you hanging on the second one. You're not going to find out if I get this because I'm going to end the video, but you'll find out tomorrow. I'll either post it on Twitter or it'll be included in the YouTube video that goes up tomorrow. So if you guys enjoyed this video, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions or uh, if you feel that these cards are good to flip and invest in. And I will catch you guys in a video tomorrow. All right, it's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.